Hello everyone, my name's Dr Dermot Burns and I'm a lecturer here at NUI Galway and I want to talk to you today for a few minutes about critical thinking. I'd like to get you ready to think critically at third level education. It's a big step moving from secondary school to university or college and I just want to talk to you a little bit about the importance of thinking critically and thinking creatively. There are a few learning outcomes that I'd like to talk to you about. These are the things that I'd like you to learn as after this course. So I'd like you to discuss the general concepts of critical thinking as they relate to you, somebody who's making the leap from secondary school to third level school. I want you also to define some of the skills and the attitudes and the self-awareness that you'll need to think critically at university. I'd like to help you develop some strategies for critical thinking. And finally, I'm going to explain to you why it's so important that you think independently and critically when you make this transition. The outline of the module is really simple. There are five areas that we'll look at. Firstly, we'll look at what critical thinking is. Secondly, we'll think about how you use reason to think critically. Then we'll look at the importance of critical thinking for you. And then I'll give you some strategies to think critically. And finally, we'll finish with a collaborative e-tivity that you can do to help you with your learning. So what is critical thinking? Well, many people find it very difficult to think in a logical, ordered and reasoned way. But you can learn these skills and you can improve them with practice and with hard work. And that's what we're going to start thinking about now. Critical thinking involves four key things. Firstly, it involves your attention. You have to concentrate to think critically. Secondly, it involves categorization, which just means putting different ideas and different information into different categories. Thirdly, it involves selection, choosing which information you want to use and think about for your own work, and finally, it involves judgment, the way you judge material to see whether you believe in it, whether you think it's false, or whether you could improve it in some way. So the process of critical thinking involves finding another's position, their argument and conclusions. So you have to identify what another person's viewpoint is, how they arrive at that viewpoint, and what conclusions they make. It also involves you evaluating evidence and taking into account other people's points of view. You will need to weigh up evidence fairly and intellectually, try and get rid of any biases you might have and think about things in an even fair way. Sometimes it means that you need to read between the lines and think about what a writer's trying to say even though they might not be saying it directly. It also involves recognising how some people try to persuade you to agree with them by using persuasive techniques. You'll also need to reflect on any key issues that you find in a text or from a speech and then draw your own conclusions from it. And that's the essence of critical thinking, drawing your own views and your own standpoints from the work of others. Finally, you need to present your point of way, view in a well-organised, clear and reasonable way. Often that's through writing an essay or giving a talk at university. And those are the key steps then for critical thinking. Being a critical thinker means that you have to be sceptical or have what we call scepticism. And scepticism means that you have polite doubt about what other people write and say. It means that you don't accept things at face value. As Cottrell says in that quote on the slide, you have an element of polite doubt, which means you keep an open mind about things. What you know might not be the complete picture. Not everything is always as it seems. And learning to think critically helps us to find out what's most reasonable to trust in the world.